Oxford or you're Australian, that sentence is going to mean two very, very different things to you. This video is all about, guys, <laughs> why it's important to learn to communicate with your coach. So let's get into it. Right, so what is Alicia going on about today? I am going on about, guys, the, in this sport, there are so many words that mean very different things to very different people, including coaches, right? That example of sit on your fanny, sit on your fanny, that is literally something that happened to me. I spent loads of money in my early career and went over to Europe and I was with a trainer in Holland. First time I'd met her and she was screaming at that to me sit on your fanny. Why don't you sit on your fanny? And the more that she said, sit on her, my fanny, guys, I'm Australian, I leant forward and I leant forward and I leant forward. I made many things as a student, but I follow my coaches. <laughs> if my coaches ask me to do something, I do it. And she got so frustrated with me, I ended up in tears because I'm like, you're telling me to do something, I'm doing it. Turns out she learnt her English via Americans. So Fanny to her means something very different to Fanny to me. And if I as the writer had have just said, sorry, when you say Fanny, do you mean this? Or her as the coach had have gone, I've said it once, now I've said it twice, she still doesn't appear to be doing what I'm telling her to do. In fact, she's doing the opposite. Maybe, just maybe I should question this. If one of us had have taken a step toward change, a step towards this isn't quite right, guess what? That entire lesson wouldn't have been wasted, which is what it actually was. So what I'm trying to tell you guys today, and those of you who are members of my Dressage Institute, you hear me say this all of the time. You have the power to make sure that all of your lessons are actually useful. You have the power to do that, but to do that, you've got to step outside. You've got to say, hang on a second, is this what you mean? don't assume. So I've spent lots of money in that example. My coach has gotten frustrated. My coach probably thinks I'm a little bit silly as well. She's like, why is this person spending all this money to do the opposite of what I'm asking her to do? Can you see how this spirals into this big spiral of negativity? All solvable by us as riders prefacing things. Use your leg more. Great, what do you mean exactly by that? What exactly do you mean by that? Because use your leg more could mean a million different things. And as riders, we need to have the courage to question our coaches. Some of you might say, oh, what do I know? Who am I to question my coaches? You know, whether you're a skilled rider or an unskilled rider, that use your leg could be interpreted in a million different ways. So you have the right to ask your coach in what different, what million different way did he mean use your leg? So much money, so much heartache could be solved if we as the writers had the power to ask this. You know that we are all about growing the sport. I have a platform where I can ask this question to you and I can change the sport in huge ways. You might think that you don't have that power. Guys, you actually do. If you took on the responsibility to ask your coaches, coach, what do you mean by make him more through? What do you mean by use more leg? When you say sit on your fanny, what are you referring to? If we as riders took that upon ourselves, to ask the coach and make a change, we're gonna come up with two things. We're either gonna come up with A, a coach that goes, oh, great question, explains to you what they mean and you have a productive lesson, or you're going to see a coach's true colors who says, who are you to question me? How dare you question me? Who's had that coach? I certainly have. 
I had an A-level judge walk out on me once for a similar scenario in recent years. It is the sport. Imagine what you can do and how you can fast track your writing and your learning just by holding your coach accountable to answering your questions. If they wanna answer them, amazing, you're gonna have a great lesson. If they don't wanna answer it, well, hey, that highlights very quickly that it's probably a good idea to move on from that coach. Look at your life from your horses today and imagine where it could have been if you put this in place. So guys, this is part of my plight to have everybody in the sport succeed and show you that it's actually really simple. What I'd like you to do is comment below, write down a scenario in your career where this has happened, where you have actually had one of the worst lessons of your life and you feel this big, you feel like you can't ride. And actually, if you're looking back on reflection now, probably it's just because you didn't understand what the coach was asking. And what an amazing thing could have happened to you if you had have actually understood. Second of all, look at how many coaches you've worked with over the years that you stick with for five, 10, 15, 20 years even, and it takes you 20 right years to realize that they're not the right combo for you. Again, imagine if you had the power to have a couple of tools in your belt that you can find that out immediately. Don't lose your confidence about what you can and can't do as a student. You have the right to ask questions and you, you have the right to expect your coach to answer them and keep answering them until you understand. So get in there guys, comment below.